Hi, my name is Nicolas, and I want to share with you about deforestation. You may think, what inspired you to make the speech? Well, deforestation happens because of humans. That would be pretty obvious for some people. So, when people cut trees, we lose oxygen. But what also happens is global warming is being created at the same time. You may be wondering, how does that happen? That does not make sense. Well, I'm going to give an example. When you push something to the ground, it makes a noise. When you cut a tree and it falls to the ground, it also makes a noise. But at the same time, carbon dioxide is being let out and it is going to the atmosphere and creates global warming. Now, you may still be a little confused. So people uh, cut trees for, uh, for like wood, leaves, and oil. Now, when that happens, the carbon, the carbon dioxide that's been stare, uh, stored in there goes to the atmosphere because we exhale carbon dioxide, but we breathe in oxygen. So we are being fed, car we're being fed oxygen, but we're letting out carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide does not go to the atmosphere. Trees collect the carbon dioxide and make oxygen, but that does not mean the carbon dioxide is gone. The carbon dioxide is kept in the tree. If you cut, if you cut the tree, the carbon dioxide is let out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you three steps you can do to stop, to stop deforestation. One, you can go paperless in your house. Two, don't buy, palm, don't buy products that contain palm and oil. And three, plant a tree whenever you can. Thanks for hearing my speech. I hope you do the three steps I told you. Bye. Have you ever wondered about children's lives and how they are? Well, today, let me tell you about children's rights to education. Children will soon become something, a doctor, a teacher, or a part of the police force. But they need to know how to do this and the specific things needed to be successful in their future careers. All children have the right to quality education. If you have a good education as a child, then you'll have a great future. You need a job to have money and have to be able to afford things like food and water and a home. Jobs provide our most basic needs. We need a good education because knowing about something shows that you know a lot about that and then you can teach other people like they're having an opportunity. And plus, they'll give you, they will pay you so then you can afford things that you need, not want. If you didn't have a job or something, then probably someone Maybe someone is paying you or something. But that only happens like when you're starting to become an adult. So when so you won't be able to avoid anything. So you want to have. So whether you're a parent or a child, you have to take advantage of every opportunity you have in education. So then you could be more successful maybe. We need a good education because knowing about something shows that you know a lot about that. Like I said before. So, children are young. They don't have to work. Or they were doing the same things almost every day. In school, they're learning about different stuff. And if you're working, and like child, and then that's child labor. And, and in school, you can learn about anything. And you're not working. So, if you're working, like if you're at home, then you probably could like teach yourself, or maybe you have someone teach you that's in your house, that's probably older than you and knows more things. In school, it's the same thing. So, if you're like young, then you have a lot of energy to like run around and play and all that. But like, so, but when you use all your energy to work. When you're young, then when you grow up, probably you'll like feel really weak and feel like you're really old or something.
because you already used all the energy. So, so at least try to learn something new every day or improve on something. We don't want children to spend their childhood only doing work. Their childhood would not be very fun and we would not, and it wouldn't be very nice to the children and you're only getting what you want and then it will not be fair to other children around you. So next time, maybe take action and try to learn more. So when you have a learning opportunity, take it and thank you. My name is Harrison, and I'm gonna start us off with a little presentation I put together. But the first thing I'm gonna be talking about is kids learning from adults. So you might look at these pictures and be like, but these are oceans and beaches. They don't have anything to do with kids and adults. Well, they will connect soon. So most people know that kids usually learn from teenagers and people in general, people older than them. So when they see people older than them do certain things, they might copy. That could be good things, but it can also lead to bad things such as violence or littering, which is what I'm gonna talk about first, is because we have learned not to litter, throw trash wherever we want, we we'll recycle, and we throw stuff in the trash that we're supposed to. But kids younger than us, they're, they haven't learned that stuff yet, and so they might copy other people and litter, but they, they can't do that, and that's because we're setting those examples. So we need to stop littering and setting those examples. Now, if we keep doing these things, like polluting and throwing trash wherever we want, if it keeps getting back into the oceans, if it keeps getting into the oceans, it could eventually look like this, which is tons and tons of trash on the beaches and in the water, which we do not want. Another thing that we need to stop doing is cutting down trees. These are pictures from now of some trees getting cut, cut down, and it doesn't look like a lot, but eventually it could look like this. And this is because we're cutting down trees for things we do need, but also for things we don't need, like furniture. If we do use it for furniture, we need to either reuse the furniture and don't just keep buying new furniture. We need to repurpose the wood that we used. And yeah, we need to stop cutting down trees for those things and also paper. We can keep using paper, but again, we need to repurpose the wood, reuse it. And if you color on one side of a uh, paper, don't just throw it away right away. Use both sides, fill in both sides of the paper fully, and then you can recycle it, turn it into something new. I don't know, but do something good besides throwing it away. Um, another way to, if you do, uh, since all these trees are getting cut down, maybe you can also go plant trees for like all the adults. You can plant trees with your kids if you're, a kid like me can just simply go out and plant your own tree. It's really simple. Um, and the last thing we need to stop doing is spraying plants with pesticide because it's basically chemicals and we're putting chemicals on the plants that we'll eat. If you're not careful with it and you eat the plants with pesticide, it can sometimes get you cancer. So we need to stop doing that and start using more natural things to keep bugs off of crops. And yeah, I need, I think um, this connects to the thing about kids and adults because we don't want kids learning to eat certain foods with pesticide and they need to be aware of what it can do. And about trees, that connects to kids and adults because we don't want kids to waste those resources that they get from trees. I also don't want tr um, kids to learn to cut down trees. And that's why I need to think we need to stop doing all these things so we don't make a bad influence and we don't want a bad future. Thank you. Hello guys. And today I'm gonna show you my TEDx speech. Hello everyone. Did you know that every year, 
Serial people are intentionally killed by sharks. While one, while 100 million of sharks are killed by humans every year. That is to say that sharks can be killed 11,400 sharks are killed per hour. On average, no more than 15 people are attacked by sharks per year. But most of the time, it's by accident. I mean, sharks usually ignore people, but an accident to encounter could be a disaster, and after that, some people and sharks could die. But, do not fear. Sharks are amazing. From the fast great white shark to the giant and kind whale shark. Sharks are amazing and they are a vital part of our ecosystem. And killing them disrupts the delicate balance of the ocean. They are very important in our lives. The majority of sharks attacks to people are unprovoked. They don't attack attack people on purpose. Sometimes it's because sharks smell blood and they think it's a fish and they want to eat that. Also because they sometimes think that humans are a big fish and they take a bite of them. Ouch. By contrast, if an unconscious fishing of sharks continues for commercial purposes like traditional medicine and shark fin soup, faster than they can reproduce, than sharks can reproduce, they're going to be extinct much sooner than later. Since I saw a National Geographic documentary, I have been very curious about sharks. So I'm going to explain to you why we need not to feel, about, feel fear about sharks and why we need to keep them in in the ocean and out of the soup list. According to studies published by devoted entirely to different sharks' life, ocean samples showed a drastic disalignment of shark population at 87%. <coughs> by eliminating diseased animals, shark, sharks help make our ocean healthier. Healthier oceans mean healthier fish from the ocean for our consumption, which means healthier humans. As you can see, sharks are not the mature human eaters people imagine them to be, like in the Jaws movie. In fact, they're more likely to be killed by a coconut than by a shark. <laughs> So, even I am aware sharks don't get enough credit for the positive roles they play in the oceans. Please, I invite you to, to admire, to protect, and to respect sharks. Thanks guys, and that was my, my speech. Bye! Good morning or afternoon. Today I'm going to teach you why and how we need to be healthy. What do you think will happen if you're not healthy? What would you think will happen? My first reason is you can get sick. And with this, I want to say that, for example, you touch a car that wasn't clean, you take germs and those germs interacting so <clears throat> that is meaning that you aren't healthy with your own body and you can make your body systems work bad my second reason is you can make others sick and with that i want to say that if you touch a car that wasn't clean and then you touch the hand of your friend you are 
passing all those germs to the hand of your friend and you can make your friend sick too. My third reason is you can create a big problem. With this point, I want to say that, for, that you thought, for example, uh, I garbage when you were throwing your bottle. Then you touch the hand of your friend. And then your friend touches the hand of her mother, of his mother. So there you're creating a big problem because mixing all microbes makes all people sick. So first you need to wash your hands and then touch your friend. So I want you to now go and start acting with these points because they are very important. Have you got the answers of, the que of your questions? Hi, my name is Ruben and I'm going to talk to you about how and why you should stay hydrated. Did you know you should drink at least two liters of water a day? Well, you should. If not, then you'll get big headaches, low energy, and may faint. Staying hydrated doesn't mean having an overdose of water. It means having the right amount, because when you drink too little water, then you get headaches, low energy, and may faint. But if you drink too much water, then you have big belly aches. It's also about having the right things to drink, because if you drink too much soda, you'll have too much sugar, and that might lead to many sicknesses like cancer and diabetes. Why should you stay hydrated all the time? Well, if you don't, then you might be in the middle of nowhere and not have anything to drink. You will die. What does staying hydrated mean? Staying hydrated means having the right amount of water every day and having two liters of water every day. You should never be dehydrated. This means always hydrated. Are you drinking, are you drinking healthy things? If you don't drink healthy things, then you might get very sick. For example, if you drink too much juice, then you might get too much sugar and might get too much caffeine and go crazy. Drinking healthy things will make you a better person, have much more energy, and have a better chance of surviving for a long time. So please, after you heard this, just drink water every day, the right amount. If you're dehydrated, get water, please. Drinking water is one of the most important things in the wor whole wide world. So please, stay hydrated and drink water. Hope you enjoyed my speech. Hope you have a hydrated day. Bye and thank you. Hi, my name is Andre. Have you ever thought about bullying? Well, I have. Bullying is a really bad thing to do with people. A bully is someone who talks trash about you, hurts you mentally or physically, and takes stuff from you. This happens repeatedly. People bully because they want to express their anger. Why hurt people? If you want to express your anger, sit down, calm down, you'll feel okay. But you can also go somewhere private and let it out. The point is, don't let it out against other people. You can also talk to your parents and they may be able to help you with your anger. They also bully because they imagine they have the power, so they feel good when they hurt another person. Go somewhere with slime and squeeze it real hard to calm down. If there is no slime, get something squishy and squeeze it instead. You can use your power with something else, not against a person. Bullies often bully because they think no one is around and they can get away with it. But there's a teacher, an adult, or your friends to help you. If someone bullies you, tell a teacher, an adult, or your friend, and he or she can come and help you. Remember, you're not alone. Get help. Speak up if nobody's helping you. 
Have you ever thought, what does it feel like to be hurt by a bully? Now you will know. Bullies throw people on the floor really hard and step on them or throw them again against something metal. That metal is really hard. These are some ways bullies hurt people physically. But don't forget, you can get a teacher. It's important to get help. They also punch and hit them as hard as they can, and that will hurt. If that happens, stay away and never get close to him or her. Avoid contact with them. Bullies try to find someone who's weak and scared of bullies, or someone who's alone. Try to stay with your friend and away from bullies. Also, don't do anything to the person for him to be a bully to you. Bullies can also mess with your head. They say stuff bad about someone. Often, it gets in your head. They might insult you or say mean things, and then you even start to believe it. That can make you feel that you don't like yourself anymore or even want yourself anymore. It can make you want to change your personality. People should be able to be themselves. You decide what and who you want to be. You can stop bullying. How? Well, in a lot of ways. First of all, you can tell a teacher or the closest adult you have. You're going to tell the adult and they will stop the bully. Try to find an adult because no matter what, they will stop the bully. If the adult doesn't listen, be sure to get away from the bully and find someone else who can help. If you see someone that is being bullied, stop the bully. Tell the teacher. Do something and you can save that person. You might not be the one who's being bullied, but it's your responsibility to help others. Tell him to stop or run away to get help. Tell your friends and tell someone you will save someone's life. You can stop bullying. It doesn't have to be a guy being bullied all the time. You can stop that. Think about caring for others and you'll know what to do. It's like the movie Spider-Man. He ran away because he didn't want to be attacked by his enemy. When his enemy came and they fought, there was a crowd. The person bullying Spider-Man had a friend to help him. But unfortunately, Spider-Man could stop them. It's important to stand up to a bully. It also is better to have somebody with you. In my research, I found a fact that said about 160,000 kids sometimes didn't want to go to school because of bullies. That made me feel really sad and angry. Kids need to learn to stand up for themselves and for others and think about what they can do. In conclusion, it's important not to bully because you will get a bad punishment or a bad grade in school. Most importantly, you will hurt someone. Don't be a bully. Secondly, you can solve the bully. Come on, try your best. Don't just stand there. If someone else is being bullied, Go, tell the bully, go do something, get somebody who can help. Finally, you know what's right. You know you need to care for the others. You will know what to do if you listen to your heart. Bye. My name is Rina. Today I'm going to be talking about being grateful. Have you ever woken up in the morning and viewed light in the negative light? Well, it may be possible that you're being ungrateful. Today I will show you that you have all the tools to feel how you want to feel in the morning. Do you know that you might not be ungrateful of having a bed? Sure, it might be an uncomfortable bed, but you realize that all, some people don't have a bed at all. By doing this, I'll be changing your um, perspective on life. We should be thankful because being grateful can make you a happier, healthier, confident, better person. And some people want to be around. 
it will attract you to be a more positive vibe. Also, Rushid has shown that if you're grateful, you can be a more positive um, person, have better emotions, feel more alive, sleep better, and have a strong immune system. And having a strong immune system can make you not get the COVID-19, if you know what I mean. Simply, simply, uh, having a grateful can lead to less depression, bring good feelings. My final reason is why we should be grateful, specifically increases dark, which is like a hormone in your brain that's actually saying, I won't do that again. The more you find it, the more you're grateful, the more you will find to be grateful. On the other hand, if you're not grateful, it can have a negative impact on life. First of all, you can have a develop an unhealthy ego. Another reason is that if you're not grateful, you can have make the wrong friends in life. People that are not grateful, they don't realize the value of presence. Now, you're gonna be wondering why is it so rare for people to be grateful? Well, first of all, it's hard because many people focus on what other people have and what they don't have. Also, some people have a hard time being grateful because they're always focusing on the things that go wrong. For example, if they mess up to something, they're only focusing on that the whole day. And my other evidence is over time, people develop habits. Some people are so busy, they don't realize that they're being ungrateful. They live their life on autopilot. My final evidence is remember you used to go to your pool or outside every day. Well, we took those things for granted, but now we can't use those things because of the COVID-19. Something to think about. Now, before I finish, I want you to remember, it's important to be grateful so you can have a better better life. It's important that you, that you are grateful for things and the people around you. Do not focus on what people have, only focus on how to be grateful. And before I finish, and remember, you have the tools to change your perspective on life. Now, before I leave, ask yourself, are you being grateful in life and how and if you're not start being thank you have you ever asked if there's life on other planets space is one of the places we don't know much very much yet space can help us on the future if we stay on earth maybe we will know more about so start with, we need to build better, better spaceships so we can go to different planets like Mars. Space is an interesting place to know about. It helps us understand our universe, our past and future. Space has things we don't know, like is there a life on Mars? It might help us on the future. If Earth gets destroyed, we can move to Mars. Space is interesting in different ways. We live on a planet and the universe is huge. There are many other planets out there. Maybe there are different planets we don't know about yet. Maybe there's life somewhere else. There are also new things in space. In the future, we might need to move to other planets like Mars. If Earth gets destroyed, we have nowhere to go. We will need to make a new life for humanity somewhere else. So why do I tell you these things today? We all need to work together. Please help us build better spaceships. Why? Because space is one of the places that we don't know much about yet. But space might be our best hope on the future. Therefore, we must need to continue to explore space so we can continue to try no no more things for a successful future. Thank you.
the World Cup USA soccer team won, but they got paid $370 million. And the boys USA soccer team got paid $400 million, even though they didn't even make it to the finals. So the girls got paid $30 million less money. Why should girls go play, play in a soccer match if they're going to get paid less money? If they don't if they don't play the same as boys, girls are going to have to leave the sport they like because the government is being an unfair, unfair with human beings as the same as a boy. As you can see, girls should receive the same amount of money as boys. Girl, girls are strong. Some like sports and they have all the right to play soccer. I don't think I don't know what what boys think, but all girls or girls can play soccer if they want to. Why girls should play sports? Everyone wants a healthy body. Doing exercise is just the right choice. But girls couldn't play all the sports. Some people didn't let them till they finally could. But still, in some schools, boys don't want girls to play with them. Maybe because they don't think it's a sport for boys, but girls can play anything they want without anyone stopping them. If boys and girls are the same, why can't they play in a soccer match together? Girls and boys might be different, but not that different to play to play with boys. Plus, what's the difference between boys and girls? To me, girls and boys are the same. For other people, they they aren't. But because of that unequal opinion that of the business that pays them, pay the girls less. What, in what ways are they different in? A lot of ways, yeah. But it's not like if they couldn't play with, with boys. I want you to think about other people and think what they would want too. Also, if a girl wants to play soccer, just let her play with you. Don't just let her be over there playing something else. And also, think what they would like to play. Sometimes you can't. Yeah, you're too many people on your team, or um, of those things, you know. Um, but you can tell her, or yeah, you can come tomorrow, you know. Tomorrow you don't have like those stuff, you know. I'm going to ask you a question, very simple question. When you like leave this video or something, and if a girl asks to, a uh, girl asks you to play with her, what would be your answer? Did you know about half of all animals have gone extinct? This is actually very bad. Scientists have different estimates, about 30 to 99%. I predict there's more than that. That's actually very bad. And the main reasons are oil spills, cutting trees, global warming, poaching, and for money. This is very bad. So workers, did you know that when you blow up buildings, animals go extinct because animals are in there. That's bad because we need them and they need us. But nicely, please. In yesterday, 2020, May, wait. May 4th, there was an oil spill, and they still hasn't got it. So we please help the thing. Workers, please don't destroy buildings. Everyone use electric buses for now global warming or electric cars, or electric, go electric, or use your cars in this. Bye. The biggest oil spill was called the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. It happened in the Gulf of Mexico and began on April 20, 2010. 
200 million gallons of crude oil was pumped into the Gulf. It killed about 82,000 birds of 102 species, more than 30,000 marine animals, and a vast amount of species. Oh, I'm sure. And did you know we use fossil fuels for gas and cars, and that's bad for the environment? Not much of a big fact, right? Anyway, in cars are many greenhouse gases escape, which makes global warming warmer, which can kill more animals. Some are pollutants and trigger soil and water. And when animals eat the plants and drink the water contaminated with these pollutants, it enters the food chain and can affect animals' immune system, reproduction, and more. These pollutants can contain nitrogen oxides and sulfur oxides, which are big contributors to acid rain. And when there is acid rain, it can go kaboom! But it also enters the soils and harms organisms that rely on it. We must stop using fossil fuels for gas in cars as soon as possible. We also use fossil fuels to make plastic, and then the plastic ends up in the oceans and forests. When plastic is in the ocean, some animals think this trash is their food. Like turtles often think plastic bags are jellyfish, so they eat it and they can die. Plastic contains chemical sources that are taken from the fossil fuels. When we burn the plastic, greenhouse gases come out and do the same as cars. If we throw the plastic in the trash and we are close to ocean, strong winds, rivers, and rain can bring the plastic in the ocean. We should stop littering everywhere and put recyclable materials in the recycling so they don't end up in the ocean some way. When we transport oil to make fossil fuels, it can be dangerous for the environment. When oil spills happen, this affects many marine animal reproductive ability, immune function, growth, and can even cause changes in the heart. Skaters and seabirds are the most affected by oil spills because they usually float on the ocean surface and that is where most of the oil goes. Oil spills can be caused when the boat is bringing the oil back to the mainland. If a storm comes and a branch hits the boat very hard, it can make all the oil come out and into the sea. Or the boat sinks and over the years, the oil comes out. Another way is when the pump that is taking the oil breaks and then all the oil goes everywhere. If we continue to use fossil fuels, we must find ways to bring the oil safely back to me. That is why we must stop using fossil fuels for gas in cars, to make plastic, and to, and to find ways to bring the oil bay safely back to Mina. Now, do you still think it's not uh, such an interesting fact? Well, maybe you do. But still, it affects many marine animals and living things. So think about what you could do to help the environment. It's not too late to make a change if we work together. Thank you. Hi, my name is Andrea Martin. Today I'm gonna to talk about germs. What are germs? Germs are microscopic creatures that can only be seen with a microscope. What are some ways that germs travel? One way that germs travel is when you sneeze and you don't cover your mouth. The other way is when you're in the day, you touch many things, and then when you're going to greet a person, you pass the germs. What is the most efficient way to greet a person without passing as much with germs? If you're thinking a handshake is incorrect, if you're thinking a High five is also incorrect. But if you're thinking of fist bump, it's correct. Why? Because you don't pass much germs with a fist bump. How many germs are there? There are many, many types of germs. But today I'm gonna to talk about bacteria. What is bacteria? Bacteria is a single-celled microscopic creature that that means it only has one DNA. When they grow to their biggest size, they cut themselves in half. And then they grow back to their normal size and cut themselves back again. That's the progress.
also they get light from the environment and they give life to the environment. So let's think. Don't you think the cleaner, the cleanest thing is actually the dirtiest thing? Take a scrum soap, a sponge. You clean with it every day and you clean the dirty plates with them. They, you are actually cleaning the plates, but actually at the same time making them dirtier. You have to change your sponge every two weeks, but within those two weeks, how are you gonna kill those germs? Well, the answer is put it in the microwave. Why? Because the heat kills the germs. Thank you, I hope you like my presentation. Welcome to my TED speech. My name is Anna Sophia Kofor Hansen. Uh, this is my TED speech about why we should help animals. Let's begin. Have you ever seen a baby seal trapped in plastic or a wolf trapped in a trap a hunter set? Well, if you have, you should do something about it. Because sadly, it is the reality of many animals all over the world. In my opinion, Animals and humans are equal. One reason that I think this is because if the theory of evolution is true, then all animals and humans started in the same place as wild animals. And even though we may have been smarter, it doesn't mean we are better. Another reason why I think animals and humans are equal is because animals, like humans, also can do impressive things. For example, they can see different they can see different colors, run on water, defy gravity, be immortal, have 360 degree vision, and they can shape shift and sleep in half of their brain. Another reason I believe that humans and animals are equal is because animals in some situations have shown true bravery, and this is very good. Here are some of the examples I have. A fisherman is saved by dolphins. A man is attacked by a mountain lion, but he is saved by a bear. A whale saves a woman from a shark. Dolphins save a surfer from a, from a shark. A deer saves a woman from an, an unidentified man. A dolphin saves a lifeguard from a shark. A sea lion saves a man from drowning. And lions save a girl from kidnappers. My conclusion from this piece of proof is that we are in depth of animals and the least we can do is help them and treat them equally with respect. Uh, another reason why I think we should treat animals better is because animals are in desperate need of our help. They are going extinct at large rates. Alarming rates, actually. NationalGeographic.com says that extinction data revealed a rate from 100 to 1,000 species lost per million per year, mostly due to climate change and habitat destruction. This is really bad and we need to help. www.conserveenergyfuture.com gave us a list of some of the most endangered species out there. Ivory-billed woodpecker. The ivory-billed woodpecker is the most critically endangered species out there. After the ivory-billed woodpecker comes the javan rhinoceros, the lever, the northern right whale, the vaquita, the black rhinoceros, and the mountain gorilla. Some scientists believe that about 5 billion species of animals that ever lived on the earth have, are estimated to have died out. This is a really alarming data, and, we, and it's the reason why we need to take care of the species we have left. But my finally, Finally, my final reason why we should help animals is that animals help us. www.helpguide.org says that pets, especially dogs and cats, can reduce stress, depression, 
anxiety, and they can even ease loneliness. Caring for an animal can help children grow up more secure and active. Also, animals can encourage exercise, playfulness, and they can even encourage your cardiovascular health. That's really good. Pets also provide valuable companionship for older adults. Some animals help us with professional support as guide dogs for the blind or as therapy dogs. They can also offer us com love and companionship in our daily lives. Animals reduce the fear of their owners in, in you know, dangerous and stressful locations. Animals can also guide the blind. They can warn those in danger of diabetic or epileptic pits. Both trained dogs can sniff out bombs, drugs, and they can pursue suspects. They can also find dead bodies, and they can. And they are now learning how to experimentally um, detect the human disease: malaria, cancer, diabetes, tuberculosis from smell alone. Thank you very much for watching my today speech. I hope you enjoy and do something to help animals. The end. Hello, my name is Autumn Khan. Thanks for coming to watch my TED video, including when it's COVID-19 time. So my claim in this TED video is to revolutionize the industries of air travel. Oh! Or in other words, my main topic in this TED video is the future of air travel. I have chose three problems about the topic. One, to reduce air pollution. Two, to reduce the size of airports. Three, the impact of airports. Let's first talk about air pollution. If we don't do something about air pollution, we need to do something, sorry. We need to do something about air pollution because from an airplane's engine, it shoots out a gas called greenhouse gases. The greenhouse gases trap the heat in the atmosphere, which causes lots of people know this, global warming if we don't do something about this if we don't sorry if we don't do something about this the north and south poles of the earth will melt away just like an ice it's just like when you put your ice in a cup it melts and the water rises and the results aren't pretty so we need to do something and finally, 90% of the world is air polluted. So if we at least do something about air pollution, the numbers won't go down, but the world will become a little better. Let's now talk about to reduce the size of airports. Airports take a big amount of space, mostly because of runways and airplanes need big runways to land and take off and many people come to an airport so then they have to have large terminals and gates and all sorts of that stuff the airports are so big these days you imagine how much money they need to spend for land and you know the airplanes these days they are also big they're so big that's another reason why airports are big it's because of their run it's because their wings their tail, all of that gadgets and stuff. Let's move on to the impact of airports. In some airports, the impact of them is quite boring because it takes hours for a plane to be ready. It is, it is, you have to wait for hours but in Singapore airport, it does not even look like an airport. I have a picture here that actually looks like this. 
Would you call that an airport? No, I wouldn't call that. More like a jungle. If we just maybe we should add these things. We need we should have plants for like a forest maybe and maybe some a barba to cut your haircut and even a movie theater and a swimming pool. If if we do this, more people will come to airports because and fly on airplanes because they will wait to do something unlike train stations and all of that because they have nothing to do but let's move on i have thought three solutions to these problems so my first one is to reduce air pollution so why not build an electric airplane it wouldn't cause any harm to the environment like for example they have electric cars and it doesn't cause any environment so it's why not we just build one we can just do that it's like a battery and switch and motor kit. We just just make it bigger and put it in an airplane. So my second one is to reduce the size of airports, which we were talking about. So why not shrink why not shrink airplanes wings? Because the wings are gigantic. That's why lots of space in an airport. What if the wings can fold like a fighter airplane for space? Some fighter airplanes can actually fold their wings. So why not take a few pistons and some rods to bend it? The pistons can push them. We would, the government would save a lot of money and more space and everything. So I've found my solution to my third problem. So the impact of airports that they are boring. So why not add a theater? to watch movies in the meantime because the to make hours and a swimming pool to swim in. Make sure to bring your swimming suit and also a barba to cut your hair like I was saying and an arcade with Gran Turismo and fun games like Pac-Man, Gran Turismo, Minecraft, Fortnite and all of the fun games. So that's it. I hope people will respond to those solutions and problems. Thank you, thank you for watching and on that terrible disappointment, it's time to end. Thank you so much for watching, goodbye!